So a gasless meta transaction is basically a way of uh, decoupling the person signing for a transaction and the party that is paying for that transaction. This is done securely in the demo app by way of a uh, what's called a relayer. And so there's a few different components. So what would be best is to head over to the workshops demo, uh, clone it, CD into the directory, initialize things. And once you have everything ready, uh, we will dive into some of the highlights of that code here. And then you'll be able to experiment with it um, locally as well. So the demo repo consists of a names registry. Uh, so there's a simple registry version that is not a meta transaction, which is seen here. It's basically just taking a name and storing it in the mapping to the address of who uh, the message sender. So the person sending the transaction. And so they're just paying for the grass of that transaction. And then the name gets stored to the registry. And then there is a second contract also in the demo repo. And the difference between this is that it's the meta transaction implementation of the same uh, basic logic. So it's also a names registry. The difference is that it's bringing in the functionality for making it a meta transaction. So you'll see in the register function, there's a difference. It's no longer message.sender, it's message sender. So the person who is interacting with the app um, sends the transaction to the contract by way of the relayer. So the relayer relays the transaction and pays the gas. So we'll just walk through how to get all this up and running. Uh, there are a few scripts that are set up that um, make this easy. But basically, in terms of the moving parts, first what we'll need to do is um, create the relayer and then we'll use the relayer to actually deploy the contract. Um, and then from there, we'll create what's called an auto task, which holds the logic uh, through which we will engage with the relayer. Um, so that allows us to set up things like uh, address whitelisting and additional bits of logic. And it also insulates the front end from the relayer so that we're not exposing the relayer's keys to uh, the front end, which is very important. Otherwise, anyone would be able to uh, execute any transaction using our relayer. We don't want that to happen. So first things first is to create the relayer. So you will need your team API key in secret from Open Zeppelin Defender. Once you have that saved in your .env, uh, you're ready to uh, run the script that makes use of Defender Relay Client API and just calls the create function, uh, creating a relayer on the Gurley network. And then once that's created, it will store the relayer key and secret to the env file and give you the relayer ID. And so the relayer key and secret are only needed to deploy the contract because we're using the relayer directly from the app um, or locally here. Uh, theoretically, afterwards, uh, we could delete those from the .env file. They're not needed anymore. All we need is the relayer ID for all of the other functionality for uh, relaying meta transactions. So there is a secure relationship between the credentials that is shared between the auto task and the relayer. Uh, and so, again, like the, the API key and secret for the relayer is only needed for uh, when using the relayer to deploy a contract we could use private key to deploy the contract. It's totally fine. We're choosing to use a relayer because that's just a nifty bit of functionality that we can make use of our relayer to do. And so that happens in the deploy script. And so what we're doing is simply connecting to the relayer using the credentials of the relayer's API key in secret and uh, connecting to the relayer specifically to deploy both the forwarder and the registry contracts. And we'll go ahead and do that. Once the contracts are deployed, uh, the contract addresses are saved to a local deploy.json file, uh, which that information is along with the ABIs needed for the next step, which is the audit task. And so you see the deploy.json has the addresses of both of them. 
as well, the, we have the relay.json with the, all of the relayer um, information, such as the ID, the address, and things of that nature. Uh, if we need to, using the API, we can change, let's say, uh, we could pause the relay or we could do other, other functionalities like that. So the next step is then the creation of the auto task. And so take a look at the auto task code here. Um, essentially, the auto task has the ABI for the register and the forwarder, and an auto task is a place for us to execute custom logic. And the auto task is um, crucial in this setup because it allows us to access our uh, relayer and run transactions, um, but do so without any risk of exposing the relayer's keys to the front end. Uh, all that's exposed is the webhook of the auto task. And so we will create the auto task and then you'll see what that looks like. We'll actually grab the auto task as the next step, the, the webhook for the auto task. Uh, so I will run the script to create the auto task. And then once that's built, we'll head over to Defender and copy the webhook URL. And then we'll supply that to our front end so that way our user is able to make use of the auto task logic and the relayer when they are wanting to sign a transaction to sign the registry. So let's check out our new auto tasks here. We have our relay meta transaction auto task and here is our webhook which I will just copy and then we will supply that to our apps.env file. And so you can see that our auto task is created uh, in a similar way that we created the relayer. We made use of the Defender client, uh, and in this case, the Defender uh, auto task client. So supplying the team API key in secret as the credentials, and then bundling the auto task code locally and uploading that so that it includes the contract ABIs and any dependencies that we need. And then we're saving the auto task ID to our .env file. And then from the front end of Defender, I went in and grabbed the uh, webhook URI, which then I'm plugged into our apps.env file. And so that way we can go ahead and get the app dependencies installed and test it out. Great, so we have our bare, unused, never before used names registry. And so what I'll do is I will first connect using a an account that has funds and I will register my name. And so I will pay a bit of gas to sign the registry, but it's fair. I have gas in my account. I have uh, ETH in my account. So I sent the transaction and after just a bit of time, that should uh, appear on our registrations. There it is. And so then now what I'll choose to do is connect with um, an account that has no funds and I will send a name to be added to the registry. And so it's simply asking that I sign the transaction. which I will do so, and that costs no gas. There was no funds in there anyway. The transaction was sent, and fortunately, we have um, some really interesting logic set up in our auto task. We have a relayer set up, and the relayer will execute the transaction and add that name to our registry, just like the one before. Uh, and so no gas needed to be paid for this one, which is really awesome. And we could go into Defender and inspect this via our logs to just um, see how it all went. 
And so you can see that the auto task was created and it was executed and the transaction went through and the auto task was completed. And so for any debugging that needs to happen, um, logging is super helpful within Defender. Uh, log trails are generated for every significant activity that happens within the app. Uh, and so I hope this was helpful. And if you have any questions, we have our Open Zeppelin forum. So at forum.openzeppelin.com, uh, feel free to ask any questions. If you are implementing something different that you'd like to showcase or share, definitely feel free to do so. We would love to check it out. And yeah, uh, see you in the next one.